Good afternoon, everyone. I take a look at the eye over the Earth. Jet stream formation over the Atlantic Ocean. And Ryan Maui pointing out this hooking weather system in April. Chilly a couple of days past. This thing is swept through. But at the same time, what I noticed was Grand Rapids, Michigan, 77 degrees Fahrenheit, Upper Peninsula, including Marquette, still chilly in the 30s. And I thought, you know what, where have I seen Marquette before? I knew I glimpsed it in the news. It's in that really cool spot up on the border of Canada. Marquette, Michigan breaks all-time cold weather record. Now this is interesting. It's not in terms of the actual lowest temperature ever, but it's the number of days. A few days back on April 19th, which continued in through the 21st, 22nd, this is up near 200 days now, consecutive with the temperatures below 60 degrees Fahrenheit, National Weather Service Marquette. This breaks the old record, 196 days set in 1970. And I thought, wow, there's a lot of activity going on with records being broken in the 1970s. And I wondered if it has anything to do with solar activity. So this is the sunspot cycles from 1900 until the present day. We're on the far right of the chart, going into solar cycle 25, exiting out of solar cycle 24. But if you're heading back in time, going left on the chart, where's the next lowest solar activity cycle that we see? 1970s. Maybe it's a matchup. And if it is, we're heading back into a grand solar minimum that's going to bring us back 400 years in intensity of weather events. So when you hear about the once in a 100 year storm, oh, it's a once in a 200 year event. Remember, we're going to be going back to the once in a 400 year event every single storm coming up in the 2020s. And you might want to start looking for signs. And I thought, well, I've always been pegging on Hudson Bay, the Great Lakes, and the Arctic ice, and Greenland to see it should be showing some anomalies, if not gaining in some areas that it shouldn't, or relatively unusual. Betsy King, WKYC Weather. Can you believe it's still ice on Lake Erie? Yeah, we're almost in May. That is unusual because it's a shallow lake. Comparatively, like Lake Superior, that's incredibly deep. This is the Easter Sunday Great Lakes Coastal Forecasting System. Wherever you see color on this black and white map, it means that there's ice still up in the lakes. Really late, actually, for Lake Erie. So I thought, let me go to the Great Lakes Ice Service. And luckily, they even had a matchup from 2017, 18, and 19. So what you're looking at is the chart on the right here. That graphic is 2017. And by this day in 2017, completely ice-free. 2018, we have a smidgen of ice in the far northeast corner, but then look how much ice has gained 2019 at this same day. And I had several family members going out to the Outer Banks of North Carolina for this Easter. So I asked them, did they evacuate the beaches? The ocean levels were supposed to rise. There were supposed to be no coastal cities left. Were you even able to get to the beach and see the lighthouses? And of course, they picnicked on the beach. None of the environmental predictions of the last 45 years have come true. I thought we were supposed to be 3 or 4 degrees Celsius above baseline temperatures. The Antarctic was supposed to have melted, raising sea levels 3, 4, 6 feet by now. Run away, global warming. Oh, they had a nice picnic on the beach. But regardless of what's happening with the failed predictions by the IPCC and global warming crowds across the planet, these changes are real. They're absolutely real. They're based on the sun, and it's going to get so much more intense than you can possibly imagine as we start marching forward in time into like 2023. 2021 is when the first food shortages will be felt in some parts of the world. 2023-24 is really when it's going to get heavy, and the whole world will wake up at this point. Are you prepared for such emergencies? I'm sure everybody listening has a smoke alarm in their house. That's being prepared. Are you prepared with your food source, your food supply? Do you have things that you can can and store foods for a longer duration of time? My Patriot Supply. And remember, every purchase you make helps keep ADAPT 2030 on air and independent. The link's below in the description box, mypatriotsupply.com. Prepare with ADAPT 2030. And here we are again, West Australia breaking all the coldest records back to the 1970s again. But that's when the temperature stations started taking measurements. 
Again, what is this with the solar cycle overlap of these temperature records being broken? Now this smashed the all-time record for this day in April, but the stations were set up in the 70s. So again, right through the 70s, there's got to be something with solar activity matching. Even going back just a single week, this is what the fields looked like in Nebraska for planting. Now some of the warmer temperatures have come, some of the snows melted off, but you got to realize I wanted to show you this picture because a week does not make that much of a difference. The snow might be gone in many places, but the ground temperatures are still very cold and it's wet. You're not putting seed in the ground. The latest that I have is about May 10th to May 15th before they're going to be able to plant in so many locations across Nebraska and Iowa. And here we are, anxious to get some sunshine. I agree. I wonder when the snow will finally melt off after this record snowfall across so many places in the Northern Hemisphere this year. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. If you're interested in understanding more about what a grand solar minimum is, how it's going to affect your life, and how you can keep your families safe, many Ice Age Conversations podcast, as well as oilseedcrops.org, the website with Grand Solar Minimum Resources. And I'm also backing up this channel here on Brighteon, the pro-liberty free speech community. Brighteon.com forward slash adapt2030.